Viger and Murphy are old foes on the gridiron, and it's no different when they meet on the hardwood. The same intensity and passion displayed during football season carries right on over into basketball. Now the Panthers have a losing record after playing some tough competition so far this season, while the Viger Wolves are looking to add another notch to their win column with a victory tonight. Who's it going to be? Stick around and see for the MCPSS High School Basketball Game of the Week. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Al Whedon along with Coach Ronnie Arrow. Don't let the Panthers' loss record fool you, Coach Arrow. They've really played some tough teams early in the season this year. They really have played some tough teams. And, you know, I always like to think when you play tough teams early, it's going to help you late, especially in the playoffs. Uh, I know Baker has done that. Right. I know UMS has done that. Uh, it's, it's a situation where you really don't want to do it, but you need to do it. Because if you just play a bunch of cupcakes early, yeah. you're not going to get a true reading on your team. Coach, Coach Epps, uh, coached under Coach David Armstrong, who's at Baker right now. He went up with them a couple years ago when they made the Final Four. So he told me the other day they went up north to play some teams like Mountain Brook and, and, and Oak Mountain as well because they wanted to be challenged by those Birmingham teams because he feels those are the teams he can meet if he makes it to the Final Four. Well, there's no question, and uh, this is his second uh, year at uh, Murphy. He wants to do a good job. Everybody wants to do a good job. But Murphy is going to be hurting uh, tonight uh, with uh, Hazi Lofton. Um, he's averaging 11 points, three rebounds. One of the better uh, guards in this area, and he's homesick, and he didn't play last game also. Right, he's going to be out, so if we're able to get the starting lineup for you right quick, we'll – get it up there for you as they get ready for the tip-off for this particular contest right here with the men headed your way. I tell you what, it's filled up. All, all of the games that I've seen this year and the ones that we've done, Al, the attendance at high school basketball games, I mean, they're sellouts, they're almost full or they're full. Um, it's unbelievable the way uh, individuals are turning out now to watch these kids. Murphy wins the tip there. That's TK Barnett. He's going to be running the point. Bigers. Bigers in a 2 3 zone. Starting out a 2 3 zone. And Murphy just working the ball left and right, trying to look for the high percentage shot. I like what they're doing. They're leaving a man at the free throw line to get it into the middle to go to the backside. Barnett's shot is up, rims out, and he nice attempted rebound. that three. And we're going to have an early foul on the play. Nice rebound by Tyler uh, Dixon. Well, I'm sorry, no foul, just a tie up on the floor. So mm -hmm. possession goes over to Viger here, the starters right here, getting the start for Viger, Tyler Dixon, Jermaine Holcomb Jr., Darius Atkins, Farron Brown Jr., and Terrell Johnson for Murphy, T.K. Barnett, Brian Jackson, also Kenley Simmons, Cam Dickerson, and Jaden Mangrum, and we do have a foul right there. We have called a, against Murphy early in the ball game. We've got Viger starting out at 2-3 zone, and we've got uh, Murphy uh, starting out in man-to-man. -man. That shot off by Tyler Dixon. Quick rebound, put back in. No, rims out. You no, know, this is one of the things that's been hurting Murphy bad is they've been getting out rebound in every game. Uh, they've got mostly guards on their team. They've got a couple kids that can play inside, but uh, the bottom line is they're going to have to be able to rebound with anybody they play this year. Farron Brown Jr. picks up his first foul for the Wolves. First team foul against Viger. Somebody's going to have to either hit the middle or penetrate because they're just playing around the horn. They're not making a uh, two take and pitching to the open person. If teams do that and just pass the ball around the horn, all they're going to wind up getting is a three-point shot. Pretty much because you're on the perimeter out there. You're not working right. it inside. That ball hadn't touched number five uh, at all at the free throw line. It's got to be able to go in there. That's uh, Kenley Simmons. 
he's got to be, a, he's a freshman, he's got to be able to touch the ball at the free throw line so that you can throw it backside. Foul on Jermaine Holcomb Jr. picked up his first. That is the challenge for Murphy. They don't have much Good size. Finish. Their tallest guy is six for it, Javon Brisker, but he's not even on the floor right now. As Murphy gets on the board first, that's what Coach Epp says. You know, we got to try to overcome our size. So basically, we got to work on fundamentals, how to block out. Kind of shows itself right there as Terrell Johnson gets the easy turnaround bucket. Easy turnaround, and he's got size in there. They're mm -hmm. gonna, uh, I don't think that they're going to be able to keep guarding him from behind. They're going to have to either three And he's only 6'1", Coach. Yeah, <laughs> so. he's 6'1". So anyway, it, it, they're going to have to do something to try and get the ball inside on offense to go to the backside. And then on uh, defense, they're not going to be able to guard from behind inside. Paul is clear on the floor right now for Murphy. It's Cam Dickerson at six feet. That shot off. Nice rebound. Almost couldn't bring the rebound down. It's Kenley Simmons. He had the hop to get up there, but couldn't haul it all the way in. He did go up and get that. He was above everybody else. That was good fundamental timing for him to, you know, get that rebound but the ball stays alive for Murphy. They turned it over coach so I can get my words out my mouth. Yeah. Little Euro step right there by Theron Brown Jr. It's amazing how much the Euro step is being used now. We're teaching it a lot more in our lessons in the classroom but and we're teaching it at early ages also. See there's Garden from behind again. Kenley uh, Simmons, uh, he's going he's to be getting in foul trouble if he continues to guard from behind. Traveling right there on Jaden Mangrum, and I believe he may have tweaked the ankle. He's going to check out for a second, Coach. Yeah, it's Jackson jumping up in the air trying to get their attention. Shot of Andre Epps right there on the sideline in the Herman Mazur Gymnasium on the campus of Murphy High School. Al Weed and Coach Ronnie Arrow, we're inside of MCPSS Sports Central bringing you the action here. Traveling on the play. Kind of bit sloppy here early, Coach T Arrow. T.K. Barnett uh, drove middle and he thought he got fouled. He didn't even shoot the ball, but there was no foul call. You've got to continue to finish the play when you drive in there. You don't have the whistle. You can't think what the official's going to call. Right. You've got to hear what it's going to call, if it's going to be a foul or not. Viger moving the ball across the court. Up nice the middle, drive. cannot finish. Terrell Johnson, they get it back out to him. Johnson showing his athleticism. Jumper's no good. And we're going the other way. They're going to call an offensive foul. Well, Murphy's going to have to figure out some way to make up the 11 points that uh, Hazi uh, would give them on the game. I don't know when Hazi's going to be back, but uh, you know he's a key for this team to be able to do what they want to do throughout the year. Passing around the horn again, again, they're not even looking inside. Um, They've got to be able to get the ball somewhat inside in there. Uh, McCampbell is moving around in there. They're just not getting them the ball. Oh, it's just perimeter there. Trying perimeter. to go low to McCampbell yeah. as he was in the lane. Nice little bounce pass right there yeah. from Dixon. The I can't convert foul on the play. And that's one of those plays that when you get the ball on defense, you're pushing the ball to score. So your defense adds to your offense. And he got fouled. Cam Dickerson picks up his first foul. Second team foul against Murphy as Darius Hapkins goes to the line to shoot. This, this free throw. Tell you what, uh, there hasn't been many uh, turnovers at all. I just have uh, Murphy for one and uh, so that's, that's going to be good if they right. can take care of the ball. Somehow or another, Murphy's got to find a way to be able to turn Viger over for them to get some points off of that. Makes the second. 
Five to two, Biger early, three minutes, 20 seconds to go in the first uh, quarter. Biger in that same defense. And they're gonna make it. Murphy shoot over the top with the three right there from the dead corner. I Absolutely. Mean, <laughs> a far dead been corner. Deeper. Nice hustle. Almost stolen by Murphy, and they do get the steal. Let's see if they can get an easy shot out of it. That's not a good shot. Johnson comes down with the rebound. Goes up top, no good with his shot. Yeah, well, Johnson, nice pass underneath. That time, Murphy beat Viger down the court for an easy layup. Easy layout. bucket, <laughs> Demarion McCampbell. Seven to five is our score here. I know Coach Jackson can't be happy about getting by uh, down the court for a layup by Murphy. Simple layup and lay in right there by Terrell Johnson. He was wide open down low. If you're gonna if you're gonna flash uh, Campbell uh, McCampbell inside, he's got a flash. He can't walk up there. There's another turnover. He's trying to go down low yeah. to Cam Dickerson, but it was stolen by Viger, Terrell Johnson, Johnny on the spot. And they go Johnson's down inside. to him. But they're gonna say it's a foul on the floor there. I believe that foul was before the yeah. shot. I, I think <clears throat> they're, they're going inside on both sides uh, of the court. Somehow or another, uh, the Murphy inside guys, I know they're small, but when you're small, you can't get buried. You got either three quarters where you got to front the post and help from the backside. That foul picked up by D.J. Johnson and Murphy hits first. High off the rim, good rebound by T.K. Barnett. A little mini Euro step by Ken and Dickinson. A finish. But I think they're going to wave the basket off, Coach. Yeah, they are. Mm, I don't know about that call. Yep, they're waving. I, I thought it would have been continuation as a... Albert Holcomb checks in. He gets his first foul for the Bible Wolves. That's a travel. I see that call a lot when I'm doing PA work at Bishop State. The young men move the foot before they move the ball. So they yeah. get hit every time. Yeah. They're going to call that every time. You know, they, they do the same thing now with when you foot fake. Mm -hmm. When you foot fake, they, yep. uh, they call that. It's hard to foot fake anymore. They look down the court, nice ball fake. Tiger beating that little trap right there. And yeah. look at Terrell Johnson down low, the 6'1 junior. That's the third. Handling business. That's the third time that they've come down out of five and got the ball inside because of being guarded from behind. They get easy shots and then they got the offensive rebound. Jumper no good for Murphy. It is tough for them to penetrate tonight. We talked about the height disadvantage that they're sitting at. They don't have a player over 6'4". Cleveland Brisker, tallest guy on their team, and he has yet to see nice. action tonight. Easy bucket missed by Holcomb. He fights for the rebound, can't get it back in. And you know, it's still a, a two-point ball game. It right. seems like Viger would be up a little bit more, but... Uh, Murphy is hanging in there. You would think so, Coach. Murphy is sticking around here. <clears throat> We're going it's the tough other way when with you this don't. One. Yeah, it's tough when you don't have size. You've got really good guards, and you don't have size to be able to get. And I'm not talking about six ten. I'm talking about six four, right, six right. five kids. Foul on Brian Jackson right there. Fourth team foul against Murphy. Both teams with four team fouls here in the first quarter. That's Traveling on the call. plate. And you talked about it, Coach, pretty much get ready to watch it run up and down the court here. Yeah. Been a bit sloppy at times, but from the pace of play, you would have thought Viger would be up by maybe five or six by now. Just only two with less than 20 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. Somehow or another, you've got to figure out how to get the ball into the lane. You can't just play perimeter basketball. All you're going to do is just keep shooting through. That middle is open, but there's nobody there flashing. You got to flash. You can't walk in there. T.K. Barnett nice shot is no good. The putback is put back in by Kenley Simmons. 
and that ties it up at the buzzer. Johnny on the spot, and we're tied to end the first quarter here for the MCPSS High School Basketball Game of the Week. As a student in the Mobile County Public Schools, there are a few things I've come to expect. One is a quality education, and the other is a quality lunch. Not only are our school meals well balanced, meeting all federal nutritional standards, but they also have less fat, fewer calories, and they taste really good. Oh, and I forgot to mention, our school lunches contain whole wheat, grains, fruits, and vegetables to give me the energy and brain power to get me through the day. We welcome you back to the MCPSS High School Basketball Game of the Week. Time for the second quarter to start. Al Whedon, Coach Ronnie Arrow inside of the MCPSS Sports Central. Take a look at first quarter statistics here in the ball game. Murphy, one for four from the free throw. I'm sorry, one for four for three. Viga, 0 for two. It's pretty much Almost identical. even battle. Good. We have a tie ball game. Yep. One for two so. from the free throw line and no free throws from Murphy. Eight rebounds from Murphy. Even though they are the smaller team, they have out-rebounded uh, Viger so far. Surprise yeah. there, Coach. And I, and I really congratulate Viger because they're going inside just about every time. And they're, they're either getting shots or getting second shots. That is a travel against Jaden Addison, a late add to the ball game tonight. His first appearance, and he comes in and commits a travel. By your stand in the 2 3 zone. That's primarily where they've only gotten the ball a shot from, is in that uh, deep corner over there. You're right about that, Coach. Viger continuing. I mean, why go man to man? You have the size advantage. Just kind of put the pressure on them, make them play out the perimeter. As Murphy trying to work it inside. You either got to penetrate to the middle or you got to pass it to the middle. But you got to get the ball to the middle. A long three from TK Barnett rims out. Jackson gives it back to Barnett. Barnett works it back over. Murphy trying to find a way to get a bucket right here as we're tied nine apiece in the second quarter. There's a quick flash by Barnett in the lane. The first tried time. To dish it over. He, he heard you, that's coach. That's the first time <laughs> that they flashed the post and hit him, and they almost got a high low, and it's still their ball. They've got to get the ball into that lane to be able to do something against that 2 3 zone. All on the floor. Nice hustle. Cam right, Dickerson Murphy. with it. There it is down low to Simmons. And Simmons is fouled on the play. You know, one of the things as, as a coach, you know, if you don't have a tall team, then you have to figure out ways to still get the ball inside to go outside or to go inside at the free throw line to look for high low or then pitch it to the wings for a wide open shot. First free throw attempt for Murphy tonight. I like Simmons, he's active. Uh, got a nice stroke with the ball. So here comes the pressure. We'll see if they're gonna trap out of it. Yeah, here they come, one, two, one, one trap. Megan looking to get the ball across the mid-court strike. There it and is. stolen by mm -hmm. Murphy. Got a three on two situation. And they're going to call a foul. I believe that's going to go against Jaden Addison, his first. Oh, I love it when you play good defense and you get paid off by points, either free throws or scoring. And they count the bucket for Cam Dickerson. They're calling goaltending as well. And he's going to go to the line, I believe, to shoot one, Coach. See, the problem has been Murphy hasn't been scoring so that they could jump back into their three-quarter trap. Correct. I think it's three-quarter. I don't know if it's full court, uh, full court. But they've got to score so that they can jump in and use their quickness for all the guards that they have so that that goes to their advantage. Panthers entered the second quarter attempting no free throws. So far, they've been to the line 
three times. They are now three Here for comes three. Trap, yeah, it's three there it quarters is. court. And you can do that after a made bucket. And another turnover. Another turnover. Shout out to my buddy Jack Jackson watching us live on YouTube. We appreciate the support on social media. If you watch us on YouTube or Facebook, we do appreciate it. Or on one of the cable outlets, Mediacom, ATT Uverse, or Xfinity. Al Weed and Coach Ronnie Arrow bringing you the action here. Now Tiger gone, versus Murphy. Now they've gone man to man. They have switched up. Murphy, Murphy has opened it up. Look how wide the lanes are. Traveling on the play. Called against Murphy, checking in for Viger, back in, Theron Brown Jr. has two fouls, but Coach Jarris Jackson is going to put him back into the ball game. Even though they didn't score, the ball's down at the other end, they're still going to jump into the three-quarter, one-two, one-one trap. Panthers up 14 to nine. They get it across the timeline. Oh, way to look over it. Atkins works nice the ball. Movement. They are moving it quite nice. Easy penetration. Try to get it down to Johnson, but they could not. He leads the team in scoring at 18.6 points per game for the Viger Wolves. Here, here comes that blur that I was talking about. <laughs> is that, they're is they're that getting that up happen? and down the court. One thing Coach Epps told me about Murphy, he said yeah, the guys are ball dominant. If somebody, you know, the team's got to learn their role right now. You know, everyone can't dominate the ball. So it's kind of a feel-out process going on for Murphy right now. As really? Terrell Johnson picks up his first foul. It, Murphy, right now, the way it looks to me is when they score, they get a chance to do what they do best, and that's getting to their three-quarter trap. But they weren't scoring early, so they weren't getting into their trap. But somehow or another, if they're going to play that zone or man-to-man -man or whatever, it's going to be tough for them to guard from behind uh, in the post because they're, they're, they're going to get wore out in the post, and it's going to get their good guards that guard in the post in foul trouble. Dickerson misses both of them. Panthers up 14-9 to nine right now. As they view size, yeah, they're back not a in. disadvantage to them. They're... They're toughing it out. You can see Johnson working down low. He has a size advantage, but they can't get it down to him. Rebound to the Panthers as they bring it up. Got a little motion offense going and hey. stolen by Viger. Yeah, that, the, that was bad on Murphy's part. They didn't get back. The, the one guy got back and made a miss a shot. But there was three Viger guys there for the rebound, and there wasn't any Murphy guy. Ball tip went out of bounds against a Viger player, so it'll remain here with Murphy. 4.51 remaining in the second quarter. Both these coaches do a good job to get their players to play hard, uh, and that's an indication of good coaching. Coach Andre Epps in his second season at Murphy so far. 18 and 23. They're running for a, the Panthers. <laughs> they're running a switching man to man. And stolen by Viger. Thrown down by Jaden Addison. We told you he was a late game ad by Coach Jackson in the Viger Wolves. He got an early foul, but right there made a quick impact. Coach Epps needs a 30 second timeout. The lead is only one now, Coach. Yeah, it's only one. The bottom bottom line is, is that right now. They're letting, Murphy's letting Viger get too many layups. They're not getting back on defense. And, that, you know, I can understand where Coach Epps is upset uh, when he called that timeout. It's one thing if things are, are going not your way, but you're hustling and doing the things, then it'll turn. But that's just energy and getting back on defense. You can't, you, you can't yeah, give up buckets like that. That's going to come back and haunt you at the end of the game if you're a two- or three-point ball game. One point, 14-13, four minutes to go in the half. Murphy up one. T.K. Barnett launches another three, and that one rims out. Murphy gets the rebound down low, but can't convert the size. Ate him up. Cam Dickerson had the rebound. And look at Terrell Johnson trying to go coast to coast, and he dishes it off. Back to man to man. 
You know, now they're starting to three quarter. At least they did then. They three quarter. Don't get caught. Uh, going down low to Terrell Johnson. Can't can't start that. That's he is fouled happen. on the play down low by Cam Dickerson. I believe that may be Dickerson third. I think that's what Coach Epps is telling him. I, I'm not sure, but I think he was telling him that he got to get around on the uh, offensive player. If it's not his third, that would be his second. As Johnson goes to the line, he's a 90% free throw shooter and drains the first. I'm still waiting for my man Debos to get in. Come on, Micah Debos? Yeah. <laughs> you know he plays left tackle for the Wolves. He's, he's a big fella, Six, Coach. Five. He's a big fella. First coach said three, 305, and he said, well, he's lost some weight. He might be 290. Yeah. So somewhere Only because of basketball season. He, play, <laughs> he plays left tackle, left tackle for the, for the Wolfpack. Loose ball That's on the floor. Cool. Murphy gains over. A little Euro step by Cam Dickerson. And the floater drops. Six to five on turnovers. Uh, Murphy's got six. And uh, Vigar's got uh, five. Pressure on the Wolfpack. A little touch pass. Down low and back out, nice trying move. to go high low. Does not work, turnover as Coach Arrow picks up his pencil. <laughs> Tracking those turnovers tonight. And look at TK Barnett in and out with the oh. Euro step. No good. They're gonna call an offensive foul against TK Barnett. Well, he's trying to make something happen. You Pretty know, much, yeah. 16, he's averaging 16 points a game. He knows how Z in there. He's got to make, not he, but the team's got to make up how Z's 11 points somewhere. And he, you know, I, I didn't see any. I thought there was good effort then. Uh, can't get reaching fouls, though. There's going inside down low to Terrell Johnson. Yeah. It rims out. And we're going the other way. Ooh, I'd like to see those uh, guards that are playing post inside for Murphy. I, I, I did like to see them three quarter front some help on the backside. That's get, Johnson's second foul. Coach. They're getting the ball too easy inside. Murphy in the bonus right here. Eighth foul, eighth team foul against Viger. As Johnson's gonna get a little pine time here at the line shooting. Kenley Simmons. 5'11 freshman for the Panthers. Averaging seven points, five uh, rebounds a game. And he's shooting 41% from the threes. Uh, he needs to he needs to get open on some threes right. so he can get those uh, threes. They need those threes. Gets the first nice. one, misses the second, but Murphy gets the rebound. Yeah, TK. Nice no look, quick Burnett. pass right there, yeah. and rip. Jaden Mangrum ripped by. Viger approaching two minutes left here in the second quarter. As you said, Coach Arrow, a very fast-paced game played by both of these teams. The score does not indicate the pace of the ball game, only 17 to 15. I would venture to say that uh, the shooting percentages aren't real good because they are getting quite a few shots. Look at that. DJ Johnson just throws it up. The prayer goes down and one as he'll go to the line to shoot. And again, scoring in transition. Mm -hmm. Easy buckets, quick rebound, outlet pass, taking it coast to coast for a nice layup and a foul. Look at the rebounded by Kenley Simmons, the putback after the missed free throw. Good hustle right there. Here comes their press. Yeah, they didn't really get into it well. Here they go again. Brian Jackson pushing it yeah. as he is stolen by Darius Apkins. The ball ripped. Addison, nice pass down uh -huh. low. Viger can't convert it in and out. Jermaine Holcomb Jr. in dismay, disbelief that his basket very, didn't drop. Very smart. 
Bad decision. T.K. Barnett doing a little too much ball handling there, yeah. Coach. You got to remember there are four of the guys on the floor with him. Yeah, and, and he drove in. There was no spacing. He drove right into the Viger guy. Murphy up 21 to 15, a minute 20 here. 30 second timeout has been signaled by the officials. I don't know if Viger called it or Coach Andre Epps from Murphy called it, but I'm gonna say that's an opportune time up six as you see Coach Epps talking to the young man right here. And the thing that's gotten them back into the game, they went man to man. They stopped the ball going inside as much because of the pressure outside and man to man. And they started transitioning the ball and scoring out of their transition defense. Got to know from Coach Epps as Murphy's gonna have open house January 17th from 4.30 to 6.30. We encourage anyone interested in learning more about Murphy High School and the great things they offer, come on out January 17th for their open house. Right now the house is pretty packed over there at Herman Mazel Gymnasium. Oh, oh the good old alley -oop. tip in alley -oop from inbounding it. Cam Dickerson rises up oh, and puts it down. Pressure from Murphy. Can Viger handle it? It's going to remain with Viger right there. The, the, worst, Murphy player. the worst thing for Viger is when Murphy scores and they get back into their trap. Okay, because so far uh, they haven't handled that trap real well. Now they're back in that 2 3 zone that they started out they the game. And they're trapping out of trapping it. Trapping out of it, yep. Putting the heat on them. And what that'll do is that'll take away from them just posting up inside and getting it inside. Addison fakes. They steal it from him. And now it's stolen mm -hmm. back by Viger. A little spin oh. move jumper, no good for Farron Brown Jr. <laughs> DJ Johnson's pass is knocked out of bounds. A bit sloppy here toward the end as we're approaching 30 seconds remaining in the contest. Both teams playing hard, Coach Arrow. They are. I think both these coaches, that's a tribute to both these coaches. They are an asset to their schools and to their basketball programs the way they coach. That three from Cam Dickerson almost dropped in, kind of deflated at the rim, but fell off. Look how active Murphy has gotten with their hands. They really have. It's kind of night and day between the first quarter and second oh, quarter. I don't know about that call. We got instant replay. No, we don't have it, Coach. They're going to say it's Viger's ball. I don't know if our buddy Charles is able to re-rack that one right quick, but only 15 seconds left here. Just a quick inbound. Let's see what... Coach Jackson is going to dial up for the Wolfpack. I think Addison wants to launch that three, but they have the pressure on him. When you got pressure out front, they're not in a steal. Aaron Brown rip at the buzzer. Kenley Simmons cannot convert. A very interesting first half. Murphy up 23 to 15. We'll take a break, come back, and bring you first half statistics. And it's halftime here for the MPPSS High School Basketball Game of the Week. Each month, more than 90 guns are reported stolen from unlocked vehicles, creating the potential of serious injury or death. Lock it up. Many violent acts and crimes are committed with stolen guns. Lock it up. According to ATF, stolen guns pose a substantial threat to public safety. Lock it up. Be responsible. Take time to record your handgun serial number and secure it from thieves. Lock it up. Lock it up for me. If you're looking for fun, fashionable, and affordable jewelry, it's here. It's Paparazzi. We have a variety of colors and styles of bracelets, rings, necklaces, and earrings for all occasions and for every event. New styles are added daily, which means you are always up to date with the latest fashion. For that genuine bling, join me, Charmaine Watson, the real jewelry lady, on Facebook Live Sunday through Thursday at 7 p.m. It's cute. It's fun. It's fashion. It's $5. It's Paparazzi. This is a program for any middle school student who's actually behind. This opportunity offers kids a chance to do two grades in one year. 
if it wasn't for Star Academy, I would still be in eighth grade and probably still struggling. We are one-on-one. -on -one. We have small classrooms and we're able to give students that personal touch, that personal attention. I know I'm coming to see good teachers, good attitude, and also they're here to teach us what we need to learn. I have known since I was in fourth grade that I was going to be a teacher. I really just truly enjoy coming to work every day and working with different sets of kids and just watching them grow and learn. I couldn't see myself doing anything other than teaching children, being a part of children's lives, being able to inspire them in a way that some people just aren't able to do. And to know that every day is a new day, a new opportunity to make a difference in the child's life means everything to me. And Murphy is in control 23 to 15 for the MCPSS High School Basketball Game of the Week. Very interesting second quarter. Murphy kind of got things together, Coach Arrow. We know they had a size disadvantage, but they took advantage of that smaller size to kind of basically use their hustle and make some points and then put that defense on them as you look at the statistics right here from the first half. Yeah, when I, I thought when Murphy went from their 2-3 zone to their man-to-man -man pressure, uh, they were getting easy layups. Plus, Viger wasn't able to get the ball inside mm -hmm. uh, like they were doing before. They were pushing the ball, scoring, then they were able to jump. The difference so far, in my opinion, was they were able to get into that three-quarter trap. And I guarantee you, uh, Coach, uh, Jackson's in there right now <laughs> going over how to break that three-quarter trap because that's the difference in the game. Right yeah, now. rebounded, out-rebounded Viger by two. And uh, three-pointers only uh, one so far tonight, one for four for Murphy. Viger did put up a couple, 0 oh for three so far uh, in three. I'm amazed on the game before this one and this game that there's not more threes yeah. being shot up there. Uh, because most of the high school games I've gone to, uh, they probably shot anywhere from 15 to 21 threes. Yeah, you're right about that. And uh, tonight in both games, there hasn't been many threes. It hasn't been too many threes tonight. They've been putting them up, just not converting the threes tonight. So three-point percent is definitely going to be down for both teams tonight, Coach. Yeah, I've got uh, eight turnovers for Murphy, <laughs> and I've got eight turnovers for Viger. I see your tallies over there. I so, see, I see my And you're tally. telling them up. Yeah, yeah. I'm taking notes from you. Hey, they, well, you know, I try to keep the information in front of you <laughs> as best as possible. One thing Coach Elf told me, he said this team is young, they're learning how to play together, trying to form some chemistry. But so far, doing pretty good tonight uh, on top of Viger. Somewhat of a surprise. I thought the game would have more points. The pace of the game has really been flowing. They just haven't been able to convert points, both of the teams. At different times, uh, you know, I, I think taking away just getting the ball inside when Murphy was falling back to the 2-3 zone, they stopped doing that. Right. And Murphy caused that because of their full court pressure. All right, Coach, we're going to take a break. We'll come back and talk to you about what adjustments need to be made on the other side of this break for both of these teams to get the win tonight. You're watching the MCPSS High School Basketball Game of the Week. Our children with special needs deserve a place to play. That is why we are coming together to build the Miracle League of Westmobile Schmidt Family Park. It will include a special needs ball field and playground, regulation baseball and softball fields, and more. We have raised more than $1 million and construction will start soon, but we need your help to complete the project. Visit mcpss.com slash Miracle League to donate and to learn more. Any dollar amount will help bring a smile to a child's face. Together, we can make a miracle. Parents, if you have a child who will be four years of age on or before September 1st, 2023, then mark your calendar to register for the Mobile County Public Schools First Class Pre-K Program. Online registration for the 2023-24 school year opens January 15th, so don't miss this opportunity. Log on to mcpss.com for more information and a complete listing of pre-K sites, screening, and selection info. First class pre-K registration, January 15th. Save the date. Thank you. You're welcome. 
Ayla, hi. Oh, hi, Sierra. How are you? Good. How are things? Things couldn't be better. What do you mean? Well, I just started this new job as a school teacher with the Mobile County Public Schools, and it has been a life changer. Great benefits, the hours are great, and great students. Just the overall, it's a great opportunity. Oh, wow, that sounds great. Yeah. I'm going to look into that. You should. For more information, visit mcpss.com slash job opportunities. If you look at the numbers, Mobile County Public Schools is making great strides. With more than 53,000 students, 7,000 employees, and 90 schools, we are consistently increasing our four-year graduation rate and our first-class pre-K program. We continue to strive for national recognition and continue to prepare our students for the global workforce. And we do all of this with one goal in mind, to equip and empower college and career-ready graduates. Mobile County Public Schools, we're learning today, leading tomorrow. It was just like an extension of home. It should give you the outlet to give you a career, a successful career. We're doing some great things at Bishop State. Keep an eye on us. There's a lot to like about Mobile County Public Schools. What I enjoy about Mobile County School is the extra attention my teachers give us to help us learn. Teachers are liking their access to technology and students are liking the quality of their education. I like the technology that's been incorporated into my education. And since 1826, you have trusted us to prepare your child for their future and we like that. Mobile County Public Schools, we are learning today, leading tomorrow. We welcome you back to the MCPSS High School Basketball Game of the Week. Make sure you mark those calendars starting Monday, December 19th through January the 4th. Winter break, Christmas and New Year. So the kids are going to be out of school. MCPSS will be uh, closed during this time. But classes will resume. Kids will resume January 5th. So parents, the fun will be over pretty soon, Coach. Uh, into the New Year, so you have to send them back on January 5th. But uh, Sure? A well-deserved break. Are you sure? Yeah. I, I'll be sending mine back. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> You'll pretty be sure ready, about huh? that. You'll be ready, huh? If they don't want to go, they're going to have to get up out of the house some kind of way, Coach. <laughs> Let's talk about second half. What type of adjustments do uh, Viger, what do they need to make? Coach Jackson and his Wolves, what do they need to do? Well, <clears throat> if Murphy comes out and is able to score and jump into that three-quarter sprint, they're going to have to take care of the ball and get mm -hmm. good shots. They were, relying so, they were relying so much on getting inside and scoring and taking advantage of what size that they do have inside and fouls. But now it's turned. Uh, they're not able to get the ball inside as much because okay. Murphy's gone man-to-man. -man. Right. And when they've gone man-to-man, -man, they're putting pressure out there, going down and scoring and jumping in that three-quarter 1-2-1-1 uh, one, one, uh, trap. Now, as far as Murphy, what do they need to do to – to, to stay on top and go ahead and get the win for Coach Epps and his crew. They got to do everything they can that Viger cannot come down and just throw the ball inside. Mm -hmm. That 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 can't happen because everybody just starts looking at the ball going inside. Everybody starts standing around. The reason why, in my opinion, uh, Murphy is ahead right now, those points that they scored on their press got them good. Gotcha, yeah. That they gave him the motivation, gave him the juice to, to get going. You know, uh, I, I'll say in uh, Coach Jackson, uh, Final Four, went to the Final Four in 2020, 2021. Right. And uh, they beat uh, Williamson in the area tournament, and his dad passed away before the next game, and they beat Jackson to go to the Final Four. And he thought that that was an inspiration that year for his kids, and he still feels that the kids were, that were on that team Look at are still inspired today. Wow, wow. I can understand that. Viger comes out with a quick bucket right there to get things started in the second half. Easy lay-in for Brian Jackson. He averages 4.1 points per game. 
as he gets Murphy started in the third quarter as well. Yeah. Murphy's come back in that 2-3 zone. It'll be interesting to see if they go back and start posting again. Pass nice stolen hustle. by T.K. Barnett. Good hustle on the floor. And he gets it down. Cam Dickerson with a little quick jumper. Rims out. 25-17 with six minutes to go in the third quarter. That was a three attempted by Darius Atkins. That might have been a four. Another rebound for the Murphy Panthers. T.K. Barnett. And they're pushing the ball. They're pushing the Fouled ball. Fouled on the play and one opportunity for the young man who played quarterback this past season for the Murphy Panthers. I know he's going to go to the line. I know Coach Jackson can't be real happy the way his kids are getting back on defense. You know, it's a tribute to the Murphy team. Their second leading scorer in IZ, uh, Lofton. He's not there. He's averaging 11 points a game. So uh, Barnett, who's averaging 16 points a game, and uh, the rest of the team, DJ Johnson, uh, has got to make up the rest of the 11 points that IZ would be bringing to the team. And they've got a nice lead. Uh, right. You know, and I know IZ and the family's watching uh, the game. So uh, more power to them if they can keep it up. Murphy's going to be called for the blocking foul right there. That used to drive me crazy as a coach. You got an official right underneath the goal. He doesn't call anything. <laughs> and the dude that's 30 yards away calls the foul. At the line shooting for Viger, Theron Brown Jr. It's in and out. Coach Epps has got to be happy with the effort of his team right now. Has to be, you're right. Off the front mm -hmm. rim, Brown misses both of them. So with the situation you're down now, you need every point you can get, especially from the free throw line. Yeah, and I, I, I got a feeling that the uh, is gonna have to come out and do some type of trapping. Uh, but the problem is they're not scoring, so they can't jump into a full court or three-quarter trap. And I believe that may be the third one on Theron Brown Jr. He is called for the little quick cheap foul right there. He's going to head to the bench checking in as Jordan Clark for Viagra. Clark's averaging six points a uh, game with two rebounds and four assists, so he should uh, he's used to getting assists. He should be able to penetrate and get the ball to open people. Mm -hmm. He moves up on Cam Dickerson. Ball knocked out of bounds by Jaden Addison. Dickerson penetrates, nice. kicks out, and nice. they convert the three, Coach Arrow. I'm going to tell you nice what. Nice three by Jaden Mangrum. I don't know about past games, but a 4-8 and eight record, they don't look like a 4-8 and eight team right now. As we, as we said at the, at the beginning of the show, they play some tough competition. They have. And that's what Coach Epp said with my interview with him the other day. He said, I want, I want to prepare them for basically the second half of the season. And he's talking playoffs. Yeah. <laughs> that's what he's talking about. He, he indicated, Al, that uh, four of their losses were to ranked teams. Right, right. So, so he said, don't let our record fool you. You know, we play some tough teams. I scheduled, I made the schedule on purpose that way to do that. Three by T.K. Barnett, rims out. Nice rebound nice by Cam rebound. Dickerson. Kind of hesitated oh. for a second, Coach Arrow, before he went in. But he's fouled by Jermaine Holcomb Jr. Cam Dickerson going to the free throw line. He really did a uh, uh, great job on the offensive boards. And I thought that bucket was going to be in, but it rims down. Murphy up 31-17, all in control. Viger trying to find something here. You know, and you, and, you, and you look at Murphy's bench. They only have three guys on the bench. They have eight guys that are capable of playing tonight. Coach F, got any eligibility left? <laughs> I don't know, but he did tell me that uh, they were going to work on some fundamentals over the weekend. You know, they haven't played since Friday. 
I'm sorry, no, they played Tuesday. They blew out Mobile Christian 79-59, but before that, they played last Friday. So a timeout called on the floor. 33-17, the Panthers all over Viger right now, Coach Arrow. Yeah, and uh, again, I think the energy coming from Murphy is helping them be able to get the ball to the right people, make good decisions. Then them jumping back in that uh, trap has really, really ignited their energy level. Mm -hmm. And when you're energized, then good things start happening for you. Just talked about Murphy blowing out Mobile Christian. Tuesday, Viger lost to Davidson right at the buzzer, 50-49 to 49 on Tuesday night. And they've already played a region game this year. They lost 49-45 to 45 to St. Paul's last Friday night. The reason they played a region game, they're in a five-team region along with Citronelle, Faith Academy, the floor, and St. Paul. So Coach Jackson said to kind of make things better in January, you need to play one region game in December. So that's how they've actually played one region game so far I this year for Vice. I tell you, another team, oh, they're back in their trap. Another team that's playing real well right now is MGM. Uh, right. They've got some athletes, and uh, they're playing really well. One team, kind of, kind of. a lot of people may not know, under the radar right there, uh, doing a good job out there, Coach Robertus Kimball and the Vikings. So uh, looking forward to possibly seeing them on the network coming up sometime it's in the new year if we can. Going, that, that would be good in the, in the near future, but I guarantee you between them and uh, Baker, that's going to be ahead of the game. Terrell Johnson comes up short on the three. Wide open on the other end. T.K. Barnett behind his back, showing his athleticism as he fed it to Brian Jackson, who was fouled on the play. Well, fouled by Jaden Addison. Again, what happened? One rebound, length of the court pass, and a foul. Mm -hmm. So they're really pushing the ball. They're, they're, they're energized. They're getting up and down the court with confidence. Jackson hits the first. Checking back in for Viger, number 23, Albert Holcomb, 6'1", junior. If, if you're a small player and you're down in the 6th, 7th, 8th, ninth grade, you know, I, I, I have a problem with, uh, you know, people thinking, well, he's too small to play. He's too, that three-point line changed the game. And you watch both these teams here. They are not blessed with a whole lot of size. But right. They play with quickness. They play smart and they work the ball together uh, for good shots. Turn around jumper by Holcomb, no good. Quick rebound brought down nice by the Panthers. The back. Nice hesitation. And look at Ken and Dickerson feeding nice. his teammate, Kenley Simmons, way to penetrate the lane and dish. Ken Dickerson. Easy uh, bucket. And he did everything. Three change of direction moves, a hesitation, a pass off, and a layup. Got no good, put up by Terrell Johnson, leading scorer for Viagra. We're doing a fast break again. D.K. Barnett with another three, no good. Good position by Albert Holcomb underneath for that rebound. Viagra moves it up the court, shot is off. Holcomb went up for the rebound, couldn't grab it. Brought down by Mangrum. You know, let, let's give credit where credit is due. They started out, Viger started out getting the ball inside, and they were beating uh, Murphy badly. And the tide changed, and for whatever reason, Viger stopped going inside. And it's really helped Mur uh, Murphy be able to get the ball get right down side and not get any fouls inside with their smaller team. Murphy up 20 right now. Your eyes are not deceiving you as the Panthers just opening up on that last, pos if we're last possession if we're able to re-rack it. Viger kind of laid off. They thought the ball was out of bounds, and Kenley Simmons hustled, kept going, Coach, and no one was around him as he laid it off the glass. Watch the replay right here if we're able to get it up. They thought, Viger thought the ball was going out or the play was over, and they just stopped playing all of a sudden. And look right here, you know, mm -hmm. no one's there. Simmons, wide open. Wide open. Yep. They just stopped. 
They, they thought there playing. was going to be a whistle. Right, right, right. Yeah, you, have, you have to play to the whistle or sometimes through the whistle if you can. You know, Al, if you looked at the score right now and uh, Murphy's up 20 points, mm -hmm. you would say, boy, they must be really hitting their threes. No, there's no not. threes. No, 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 there's no threes being made in this game. That ball thrown back court by Cam Dickerson. Errant pass by Dickerson. So, quick basket. Here's a little turnover. Trying to cut into that lead some more for Viger. Oh, good reach around right there by Three Jamari quarters. McCampbell. Three quarters. I guarantee you, Coach Epps had a talk about guarding from behind in there. Three quarters, turnover. That's another turnover. You got to get your, get your pencil out. Yeah. Statistician. Dickerson passes nice it over. Cut to the hole. TK Barnett back to Dickerson. Look at the motion in their offense now. Moving without the ball. Good job. Good rebound right there by Mangrum. Dickerson's three is no good. They're going to go back to him. He's putting on a little dribbling clinic. Drives it in. The layup no good. Figer moving quick. Jordan Clark. Cannot convert the basket, Coach Arrow. Loose ball, and Murphy has it now. Yeah, they need to, you know, again, play smart. They they need to have the ball, get a good shot, penetrate, pitch, wide open. Can we make a three? DJ Johnson drops a the three. Tray. That is a three. <laughs> we are we are witnessing a three in the ball game. Oh, errant pass by Viger lost. TK Barnett. He's going to try to take it in and does with the layup. Yeah, timeout. I think Coach Jackson is going to need to get a T.O. here to calm yeah. his guys down. And there yeah. it is right there. Coach Epps fired up for his Murphy Panthers all on top of Viger right now. We bring the best out in people uh, in teams. Uh, I mean, I, I cannot believe that uh, Murphy is a 4-8 and eight team. And I tell you what, they're, they're beating a good team uh, in Viger. Who's what, seven and five? You know, there. Uh, this isn't just uh, a, a team beating a, a bad team. Uh, Viger is a good team, but for right now in this game, uh, Murphy is showing energy, right. effort, and good things happen. And the two seniors definitely showing leadership. T.K. Barnett and Cam Dickerson. The other senior, uh, Hazik Lofton, is out. So only three seniors. It, this is a young team. The Murphy Panthers. Uh, this season for Coach Andre Epps in his second year at Murphy High School. But right now, they're putting on a clinic against Viger. They really are. 44-21 is our score. 90 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. And Murphy has continued to open up this lead against Viger. If yep. I'm correct, Viger's only put up. Yep. So Another there three. Right there. there we Six go. points here in the third quarter. 44-24, Murphy up by 20. And there's Viger pressing. There's plenty of time. There's there's plenty of time. Viger just needs to put pressure on the ball, take first passes away, no second shots, and push the ball and get a good shot. Lane wide open from the Campbell's layup. There you go. No good. Viger hustles down the court. Oh. They cannot convert. Oh, they needed that bucket yeah, right they there. Did, uh, that would have been good momentum yeah. going into the the end of the quarter. No look pass. TK Barnett way across court. A little touch from DJ a Johnson. A little floater. <laughs> Mardi Gras is just around the corner, coach. You can hop on the float. DJ Johnson trying to put you on there. Nice shot right nice there. Nice shot. And you know, uh, he if he would have kept going, it might have been a charge. That was a real, and again, for young kids to know how to use and when to use a float. And speaking of the charge, right there, one may say the legs taken out from up underneath Jaden Addison, but actually they call the charge on Addison. I believe that's his third, Coach. Yeah. Fourth team foul against Viger. It's so far it's... in the second half, only one. Here's the call right there mm -hmm. as Murphy takes the charge. Only one team foul against Murphy here in the third quarter. Very good quarter they have played. Whoa. Cam Pritchett checks in. That three no good. Nice pass. See, they're penetrating and pitching. I believe that went off the foot of Nicobe White. It will be Murphy's ball. And that's the end of the third quarter. Just that quick. 
46-24. Panthers all in control. Don't move. Fourth quarter headed your way up next. Hi, I'm Todd. And I'm Terry, and we'd like to invite you to join us as we take a look at nature in ways that you've never seen before. Come travel with us as we go coast to coast to uncover some of the most interesting animals. And some of the most beautiful scenery that's offered outdoors. You can join us on our nature adventures right here on the MCPSS TV network. So 1.8 seconds were put back on the clock. And as you just saw, Viger shot no good. So now we will go into the fourth quarter. Again, to interrupt our commercial break there, Coach, to go back and uh, let the officials put some time back on the clock. But did not affect the score, still 46-24. As we'll try to get up uh, stats through the third quarter here in this contest. There they are. We've had those threes, three Hi. for nine for Murphy, as you can see, and very good on free throws so far through the ball. Still leading in rebounds, 24-21. Uh, I think that as far as turnovers, uh, Murphy's got eight, and I have 10 for Biger. So that's, uh, that, that's not bad with one quarter to go. The biggest thing is, is that, again, Murphy has become energized. They, they, they smell a win, they going after it, but they're not, they're, they're making great decisions gotcha. with the ball. They're not just down jack one, down jack one. They're making great decisions. Winter break is upon us. Don't forget Christmas and New Year's. Kids will be out of school December 19th through January the 4th. Classes will resume on January the 5th. That's when you send the babies back to school, <laughs> January the 5th. Down low, Addison. Nice play. Nice pass. Nice play. As Spearin Brown Jr. gets the bucket. Now they're coming back with a press. And there's his defense as he kicks the ball. They're, they're going to the, have to press at this point, Coach. Yeah, they're, they're going after him full court press. Down 20 points. This time, gut check time here for the Wolves. Spearin Brown trying to get back to back buckets. Does not. Mm. Put back by Dixon. No good as well. Loose ball on the floor. Yeah, great hustle. Picked up by Viger, Terrell Johnson, leading scorer with the finger roll through the lane. And Viger trying to step it up here. You got to turn it on and keep it on for a while. Pull it. Play smart. Let them come to you. Brian Jackson pushes it over. DJ Johnson, another, another floater. floater. We got to get that kid on the float for Mardi Gras, <laughs> Coach. That's two in the ball game. And a steal. And a quick steal. Cam Dickerson to the yeah. hole off the glass as Murphy extends that lead Murphy to can, 22. Murphy can do nothing wrong right now. Five, looking for a three. Off the rim, Addison goes up top, climbs the ladder to get the rebound, and he is fouled on the play. I'm going to call that on Cam Dickerson. I believe that could be his third, possibly fourth. I haven't actually whiffed for him. So we'll see. 22-point lead. Six and a half minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Viger Murphy. Murphy has exploded for some points to take the lead. It's all kicked out by Tyler Dixon. It'll remain with Murphy. And they've done it with steals. They've done it with three-point shooting. They've done it with good decision-making. Ball in the hands of Cam Dickerson. Lane was wide open, kind of hesitated, but he is fouled on the play. I believe that's going to be called against Terrell Johnson. That'll be his third. And that's going to send Cam Dickerson to the line to shoot for Murphy. You no, know, Terrell... His average is 19 points and 10 rebounds right. a game. And I don't know if he's going to right now. Uh, I know the 10 rebounds is probably going to be there for him. 19 points. Still got a chance to do that. Dickerson misses the first. It's 
tell you what, this time, this time of the year, I've talked to a lot of coaches and it seemed like more and more they got sickness out, uh, bad ankles, uh, bad legs. Oh, yeah. But this is the time to do it. Get them well for the end of the year. Trying to go down low to Addison. Like Ball that. deflected, but it gets back to Addison. He puts it in. Nice bucket right there from Viger. Trying to cut to the lead. It's still 20. Six minutes remaining in the contest. They get a couple steals and score. Uh, they can get back in this thing. Still got play some defense, but you can't foul like that. No. Hopefully that one won't be against Addison. And I believe it is. That'll be his fourth, according to my indication. 16 fouls so far against Viger. One more foul is going to place Murphy in the bonus. And down 20, you don't want to do that. No. Coach Jackson and uh, Coach Epps both right now, they got to figure out Murphy's got to just play smart and uh, Viger has got to get some turnovers in that press today. Addison launches a score. three. And it goes off a of Viger player for his Murphy's basketball. Barnett throws it way past the timeline. Look at Jackson taking his time, Coach. Smart. No need. Smart. No need to force the bucket right there. Kind of just play some keep away and really let the clock be your friend here. Oh, nice as Jalen Mangrum ran the baseline. <laughs> I thought two people traveled that time. <laughs> Stolen by Murphy, DJ Johnson. As he takes this time and floats it over to TK Barnett, back to Johnson again. Murphy in complete control. Nice jumper by DJ Johnson, the 5'11 junior. Making his name known tonight on the MCPSS High School Basketball Broadcast. Here's a three from Viger. Rims out. Kenny. Kenley Simmons goes up. For a good, strong rebound. Nice put back by Farron Brown, Jr. Still playing tough, the Viger Wolves. They're trying. They're trying to get back in there. But the lead is 24 with 434 remaining in the contest. Viger's going to be playing Theodore December 28th to kick off day one of the Gulf Coast Holiday Classic, which runs December 28th through the 30th at Spring Hill College. And speaking of games, our next contest is going to be Thursday, January 5th. Bryant versus BC Rain. It's our first game of the new year, Coach. We're going to tip off be the another six good boys one. at 730. It's going to be another good one. I agree with you. So we're looking forward to seeing you guys in the new year. TK Barnett hits the second. Well, 55, we're going to see. 32. We're going to see what both teams are made of now. You know, we don't. Murphy don't want to come down and start getting sloppy and taking bad shots and turning over. And Viger's got to just play hard. They're to the point now where you don't need to foul. You just got to get the steal, go down and score to get somebody a good shot. Barnett launches another see, three. They, they he hasn't made that. one of those threes tonight, and he's attempted. Look at Dickerson down low, hustling and fighting. Albert Holcomb comes up with the rebound from Viger. We're going to call the foul right there as Daedric Bush is fouled by a Murphy player. Do you think we'll get to see Debo? Coach, I don't think we're going to get to see Debo tonight. Only the second team foul against Murphy here in the second half, so. One thing about their play, they've been playing pretty clean. They have. They have. Turnovers are not that bad uh, at all. This time of year is when you got to stop turning that ball over. Addison with the turnaround jumper from the elbow. He's a 6'1 senior. No reach around by uh -oh. Viger. Addison, Johnny on the uh -oh. spot. Yeah, Coach Gets it off the glass. I thought they would have called the timeout a little quicker. Maybe it was delayed. 
and he wanted to get uh, his troops over to the side and talk to him. We just talked about Viger, their upcoming schedule for Murphy. They're going to host for Florida tomorrow night. Then they'll travel to Baker. That'll be a pretty good game Tuesday night if Murphy will be at Baker, Coach L. That, that will be. Uh, they'll get to see Murphy being able to continue to play like they did tonight uh, against a good Baker team. Now, uh, again, like I said And we earlier, know they have some kids out at Baker, they too. Some, they got injuries. They got, right. I think uh, David told me that they've got three kids with either COVID or the flu. So that can wear on you real quick. Mm -hmm, sure can. But you got to show up and play, you know. Well, next man up, coach. You know how it is. Yeah, it is. That's why you can put, uh, you know, ten or eleven or twelve on the squad. So yeah. <laughs> you know, you gotta gotta be able to field the team. Fifty-five, thirty-six is our score. Al Weed and Coach Ronnie Arrow here inside the MCPSS Sports Central. Giving you this contest between Murphy and Viger. Murphy all in control, pretty much sparked by a second half, if you want to call it, just uh, really focus on scoring and playing some good, solid defense and rebounding and never looked back after the second quarter. Never, never looked back. And they just kept adding to it, adding right. to it, adding to it. You know, I, I know going away tonight, Viger's going to feel really bad, but they um, have got a good coach. They've got good players. They just got to go regroup and come back. That's what this time of the season is. District is important, and then after district, that's what you're working for. Nice Behind the back pass and T.K. Barnett hits Kenley Simmons for an easy bucket. Here's a three from Viger, and it is drained by Tyler Dixon. <laughs> Both bunches now. Uh oh. Three men on Barnett trying to keep somebody got to be open. Him, Barnett is somebody got to be right. So if three guys are on you, <laughs> two guys are open, but he couldn't really get the ball to anyone else. So they're gonna call that foul on Jaden Addison. That'll be his fourth. I believe eighth team foul against Viger. And three minutes left. He's going to go to the line. Three minutes left. Finish up another good game or two good games. Even though this one got a little out of hand, guys play hard. And, you know, early you would have thought, boy, Viger's going to run away with this stuff. You really, you really did, Coach. I'm with you. You know, you kind of had thoughts that it, if, if Murphy can try to contain them, you know, basically it's – as best they can and we talked about the height disadvantage but as the game has went on as you can see their determination and their, their hustle they've made up for the height disadvantage no problem right. you know right. they're just playing some ball today foul I'm, on the play i'm surprised the official called that knowing that uh was getting down I mean, the end. but it, it was a foul it was a foul i mean you know it's as they say it's it's, it's somewhat you know out of hand here 57 41 <laughs> 227 remaining in the contest as we'll be wrapping up our second broadcast of the year here but uh don't forget coming up in the new year we'll have more action coming your way we'll be starting off as we just said with brian and rain and coach i know over the holidays you're gonna watch some action i'll be uh watching some action at the gulf coast holiday classes so i'm pretty sure i'm running to you over there yeah, at Springfield College. We'll, we'll, we'll be over there uh there's get to see the viger wolves team, again as well viger and a whole bunch of other teams right. coming in so looking forward to that holiday action. Always a good treat during the holidays. If, if you've been supporting high school basketball in this area, good for you. If you haven't been and you like the game of basketball, choose a school, choose one of the high schools close to you and go see them play. Because I'm telling you, there's not only some good kids in the area right now mm -hmm. playing, uh, juniors and seniors, but there is some very, very good young players coming up at all of the high schools. Easy lay in by Cam Dickerson. Murphy extends their lead. Still playing some tough defense. Got called for a foul yeah. right there. That, that was just a reach foul. Yeah, and Dickerson's going to go to the bench. I believe he has fouled out. Cam Pritchard comes in. I guarantee you, both coaches right now are saying. Let's just get this over with. <laughs> Murphy's 
Murphy up 18 right now. And Two I, minutes remaining in the contest. I promise you, Coach Epps isn't trying to run up the score. It's no. just one of those things that uh, they got into the groove and started scoring, and uh, it was hard to stop them. Three by Albert Holcomb, and the foul right there by Holcomb as they're trying to send him to the line. And coach, I believe your wish came true. I didn't realize it, but on the floor, number 30 for Viger, the <laughs> sophomore, my, my Michael Debo. My <laughs> night has been made. <laughs> your night's made I'm now, really coach. I'm really surprised that they have a uniform to fit that young man. Oh, he's a big fella. He's a big fella. There he is right there. Just having fun. Oh, yeah. he, he's a great left tackle for the Wolfpack. I, I will have to tell you that. I've seen him in action a few times. And you know, you, you sit back and say, you know, hey, you're a football player. I guarantee you, if he likes the game of basketball, like being out there, there's nothing that he could be doing better than playing basketball. Right. Help his eye-hand coordination, help his footwork, all the good things that still help him be a great player in football. Especially playing on the blind side right there, protecting the quarterback. So definitely got to have some good footwork. Filed on the play is Dadrick Bush as he drives in to try to score. Then Marion McCampbell picks up the foul there for Murphy. As we are 95 seconds away from wrapping this one up. Panthers all on top of the Wolf Pack tonight. Kind of surprised a few folks here with this display of offense they put on. This will send a message. Now, what Murphy's got to go back and do, guys, and Coach Epps, uh, I'm sure that, guys, what made us look this good? What did we do? What was the turning point? How did we start out so slow? What was the turning point? So use it as a learning process. Same thing with Coach Jackson, okay? We started out really good. We started out getting the ball inside. Mm -hmm. right. Did they have anything to do with us not getting the ball inside after that? So it's a learning process uh, for both groups. <laughs> There's the big fella right there, Coach. So your night's nice been made. You were, I, you, were, you were hoping to see him in the ball game. I was, tell, I was telling you, but you know what? I don't know the young man, but he looks like he's having a great time. You know, let's have some fun, guys. That, that, there you go. If there's a problem, I'm here. And I'm loving the uh, <laughs> Murphy cheerleaders throwing out the swag to all the Panther fans yeah. still in the house tonight. So that's how you reward your patrons for coming out to the ball game and, most importantly, supporting high school athletics. Nice shot right there. Oh, China Powell took a <laughs> T-shirt to the face, one of our statisticians <laughs> in here. As they say, you got Mardi Gras, you got to have your Mardi blinders Gras. on, Coach. Mardi Gras. <laughs> Keep your head on the swivel. You never know what's coming your way. You know, being from Texas, and my dad was from New Orleans, was born in New Orleans, but being here and seeing the atmosphere of Mardi Gras, what a great town. Mobile Absolutely. Is. What a great town. Absolutely. Nothing like I it. Nowhere. Albert Holcomb with a little head fake. A little sidestep move, and he gets an easy basket for the Viger Wolf. Still hustling, still playing. Coach Jackson using his timeouts, Coach. And basically a situation like this, I mean, you've coached a while. You've probably had a blowout, too, on both ends. You still got to teach. You still got to teach. You have to teach, and you have to get them together and mm -hmm. say, look, guys, we know we're better than this. Right. This was not our game. We need to just put it to the side, come back ready to work and practice, go home, Open our presents, see Santa Claus, come back ready for the second. <laughs> for the Gulf Coast Holiday there Classic. You there you go. <laughs> yeah, just was it one of those nights at the office. One of those nights. One of those nights at the office. It wasn't our night, guys. And then on the flip side of that, you got Murphy over there, guys. Proud of y'all. Let's go eat some turkey. Mm -hmm. But they got, they're going to have to face the LeBaron Fileron show, too, the over Baker, so their hands will be full. Uh, so no doubt about it. Try to have a a repeat performance of I'm what they've done tonight. Watch that one. You know, with all my kids that come to me, I, even fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, go see them play. Correct. But uh, again, the older ones I, I get to see also. Definitely can understand that. That should be a good matchup as well. As we said earlier, Viger is going to be playing Theodore December 28th. They'll be part of one of the teams of the Gulf Coast Holiday Classic over at Spring Hill College. At the line shooting right now, DJ Johnson, he's done well tonight for the Murphy Panthers. 
as he hits the first from the free throw line under one minute to play here in the contest. Well, Al, it's always a slice of heaven working with you. You do a great job, but uh, I've enjoyed being able to come and, and help be a part of high school basketball. Uh, I've been here a while now, uh, twice coached at University of South Alabama. What I've seen is that basketball in this area is coming up, and it's been coming yeah. up, and more and more kids are getting better going to camps and being able to, by the time they get to be juniors and seniors, be very nice players. Well, thank you, Coach. We appreciate that. We're going to keep it rolling into 2023. I believe we have a timeout called as one of the Mercy Panthers is on the floor. He didn't want to, he didn't want to be signaled with a travel, so he got the timeout call. So they won't have a turnover of the possession. 44 seconds remaining here. As we said, January 5th, Bryant versus Rain. That'll be our first ball game of the new year. We'll have the girls and the boys tipping off at 6 o'clock with the boys playing at 7.30. Our first time having Bryant on the broadcast. We had Rain last year, so we'll get a chance to uh, see the Hurricanes play, Coach. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be good. The, the more that we can get to see in this area uh, of high school basketball, the better. Hopefully, more and more people are going to watch us here to show how good these players and these teams are. Go tell your friends. We'll be back on January the January 5th. 5th. So uh, same, same stations. Uh, come see us. Cam Dickerson nice dishing play. it over to Brian Jackson. I'm sorry, Kenley Simmons with the easy lay-in right there. And things are about to come to a close here for Murphy and Viger. A ball game dominated entirely by Murphy. First quarter was a bit close, but from the second quarter on, the Panthers turned it on and never let off the gas. There's Big Michael <laughs> Debo's coach. Your dream has come true. My the man. big fella, the big fella <laughs> with the points down low. He didn't exactly explode down the court. <laughs> he after. did not, coach. Nor did he have to, but, but he made the book. That's all that matters. He Good made the book. So Murphy gets the win, 64 <laughs> to 51, a great contest put on by both teams tonight, but hats off to Coach Epps and his crew up at Murphy. No, no question about it. I'm happy for them. And I know that uh, uh, Coach Jackson will come back with Viger and right. have their team back to where they want to be and need to be. Absolutely. We'll try to get the final stats up here in a moment as the Murphy Panthers are all celebrating and taking on to the floor to celebrate that victory of Viger. I, 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 I'll say, Coach, a slight upset, a surprise, if you want to say. I mean, it's a 6A team playing a 5A team, but on paper, pretty much you would have said Viger would have won this ball game. Can't take anything for granted. When, you, when, when you're supposed to play and that bell rings, you've got to answer the bell right. that night. You've got no matter to. what's going on, when it's all business when you go out on that court. You've got to do that. As we said, Murphy's going to be hosting LaFleur tomorrow night. So they've got a battle, and then they'll travel to Berkey, Baker, too. To hear the final stats for the ball game, Viger actually ended up, ended up winning the rebound battle 34-30. to But the field goal, they could not overcome that with the score 64 to 51. They kind of, it was a 24 point lead at the greatest, coach, but they kind of got it. They, they kept a little close, a little, what do you call it? Trash points at the trash, end. Yeah, trash points. And, and again, you look at the stats here, you can see why the score was the way that it was. Stats don't lie. And they'll tell you the story of the game every time. And your eyes do not deceive you. No. Viger did not make it to the free throw line that much tonight. I had them three for four as well. So Murphy did play a very clean game. Not very many team fouls against the Panthers. And, you know, I don't say it very often, but the officials did a good job. They were consistent. <laughs> they were consistent, and they let them play. Gotcha. And uh, they didn't take the game away from the players. All right, Coach, speaking of the game, our next ball game will be next year, Thursday, January 5th. Join us in the new year as Bryant takes on Rain. That'll be our next broadcast. For our director, Wade Ford, engineer, Fran Conaway, executive producer, Quentin Howard, our statisticians, Matt Moore and China Powell, and for the coach, Ronnie Arrow, I'm Al Whedon. Thanking you for joining us for another broadcast of the MCPSS High School Basketball Game of the Week. Have a great holiday and have a happy new year. We'll see you in 2023.